and welcome to Candlepin Bowling, presented by Candlepins for Cancer, the tournament and charity put together by Hall of Famer Al Johnson. As always, every week it's three strings of Candlepin Bowling, total pinfall determining the winner, and it's a stepladder format. So today we will see the first of four matches, five seed against four seed, and then we'll climb the ladder all the way up to the $2,000 top prize. Without further ado, let's introduce our first bowler. He is the number four seed, Chris Merrill. Let's have a hand for Chris here. Thank you, everyone. A great crowd we have here today at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. And Chris, you're no stranger to this place. Back-to-back -back Easter Classic Championship. How much stamina does it take to win tw a 20-string format like that? Uh, well, when you hit about 9 o'clock and it's past bedtime, it's all adrenaline at that point, so. Got to find a way somehow. I mean, that went until like, what was it, 1 or 2 a.m.? That's right. Uh, how do you think you'll fare today? I mean, you could have a dozen strings you have to bowl today in order to climb the ladder. Are you prepared to do that? I'm ready. We'll it'll be a good fun match. Good friend to start, so it'll be fun. Fantastic. And your opponent today, Richie. Uh, let's bring up Evan Riva. All right, Evan. Evan, a fantastic bowler. Um, he may have come in second in the Easter Classic this year. So uh, what do you have to say about that, my friend? Uh, almost had him. Almost had him. Almost had him. Ran out of strings if it was maybe 22? Yeah. Uh, 25, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, a little revenge maybe. Uh, maybe a little revenge today. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, awesome. It's going to be a great match between two fantastic main bowlers, and we'll be back right after this. And welcome. This is the first string of the first match of our fourth tournament here on Candle Pits for Cancer. Evan Riva on lane 33 gets us underway. Second ball smokes the head pin and leaves just the five remaining. Better second ball from Evan there. And gets back in the groove with a 10 box. We are here on Alley Chat on YouTube. Thank you so much to all of you tuning in today to witness this great tournament that Al Johnson has put together. And it's for a great cause as well. Evan now his first ball on 34. Washed out five. One, three, seven, eight, ten. An interesting lead, Richie. You put it on the front two and see what happens here. Got in the pocket. Does and he makes go. a beautiful shot. Wood spins into the eight and it goes beautifully. Five, one, three, seven, eight, ten. An interesting lead, Richie. Alongside Richie Myrick. Appreciate that, Greg, and appreciate you joining us. My pleasure. Chris Merrill washes out seven pins to begin his first box. One, two, and four. Piece of wood straightened out on the right side. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. Goes right at the head pin. So seven and a pair of curtains for Chris. But as they say, Greg, all good games start with seven. <laughs> First ball on 34. Off to the right again. Hmm, deja vu, huh? One, yeah, he, two, seven, eight, ten. Here's a mirror image of Evans' first shot there. Too full of a head pin. Two, seven, and ten. Chris Merrill is one of those bowlers who definitely flourishes late, at least based on his recent performances. Like we mentioned, back-to-back -back Easter Classic champion. He has a 16 to begin his first two boxes. Evan Riva from Stoneham, Massachusetts. High single of 193, high triple of 497, and a five, high five of 797. He averaged a 126 in getting the fifth seed in the roll-off. He's on the two pin and he has the one, three, and eight. Second ball scoots by. Mm -hmm. 
Third ball gets the three pin and it's a nine box, 36 for three after a seven fill on the spare. Evan mentions to us that he really enjoys his work. He works at Lookout Farm. This ball's on the head pin. He's got the seven and eight he's looking at, hoping one will go. Piece of wood covering the seven, mostly in the channel. He's got a fun one here. There's uh, two pieces of wood on the right, and I believe they're touching. If he finds in between, because I don't think the seven pin is any good here, Greg. I think he's got to find in between the two pieces of wood on the right-hand side and try to get something spinning to the left. He does go right, spinning the wood. He does carry him into the eight. Nice offer. I don't think it was any good on the seven. Probably far, too far back, but well pinned in a 10 box. Yep, it's a good trip, a good 17 box with the fill and a nice 10 there. Something for Chris Merrill to think about. Remember, this is a three string format, total pinfall. Winner of this will take on the number three seed, Dom Drake. Merrill crushes the pocket for 10. But to the right, he might have sliced that. And an eight. Chris Merrill, originally from Lewiston, Maine, now in Stoneham. High single 195, high triple 492, and a high five of 725. A little extra action there. Almost had that diamond, now 258. It's always tough to drive that pin straight back. Whenever you get the half Worcester, it's so easy to do when you're not trying to do it, and then trying to drive those skinny pins straight back it never seems to want to cooperate. Evan Riva back up, leading by 13 pins through the first four boxes. This one's on target. All kinds of wood flying this way. That was a powerful delivery. And this is going to create a lot of work for Al Johnson here. And nicely collected. boy Alf, they say. <laughs> spare chance against the 10 pin, nails it. And Riva gets his second spare. Nicely done by Evan. Up 13 pins here early on in the match. Lane 34, again crushed. He's pleading with that five pin, it's wobbling, but it will be a seven fill on the spare to bring him up through 56 of the he half. He's pleading for it to stay up. If, he, uh, if it fell, he would have had the eight and the nine, but now since that piece of wood has rolled all the way up to the lip of the deck, it makes it a very difficult shot. He may have to go all the way left here. He goes on the red line, ball deflects the other direction, to your point. Takes out two against the tricky triangle and a nine. Right, Chris, we are here at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, and thank you to Lexi, Matt, and all the staff at Lita Lanes for having us today. Lita Lanes has 36 lanes of candle pin bowling, pool tables, arcade games, plus great food and drinks at the Kegler's Den. Right next door, Lita's Lighthouse, with 12 more lanes of glow bowling and plenty of parking available. You can visit them today at 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, New Hampshire, or online at LitaLanes.com. Lita with a D. Well pinned, Richie, wouldn't you say? I would say so. Uh, he was very unlucky. He almost uh, clipped the clipped eagle.
by throwing the three in between the two, through the two pin in between the three and the six. And there it is again. Now, how about this piece of wood? Is it angled correctly? Gives it a ride, got a sidewall kick. Still a 4-7-10 and still some work to do. All right, eight after six boxes. Evan Riva has 72 and Chris Merrill has 51. And we will take a timeout here. Evan Riva ahead by 21 pins and we will return with the conclusion of the first string in just a moment. Welcome back, Evan Riva standing up on lane 33 on a 21 pin lead. Twenty-one pins. Neither bowler on a mark. And Riva gets the two pin. Four horsemen and the five pin. Placement should be the same. Get it in the one three pocket and he could get this to go. And he just scooted by the head pin. Wood scooted back, but the head pin is all that remains. Nine it is, and he's got 81. Evan Riva rolling out of Exeter Lanes in New Hampshire. He's accomplished a lot here at Lido Lanes. World's Invitational Champions with Price's Wood Flooring. On lane 34, head pick. 2-4. And a chance here for his third mark. Remember, Price is a fantastic team. They bowled well the entire week. Evan, a huge part of that squad. And a spare hitter. See why already 91 and a ball. Bringing up the number four seed, Chris Merrill. He's got some head pin hits and another split. This time it's a hay bale, five pin cluster on the right, and the seven pin. Gave that one a ride. Everything but the six, that's tough to do. Nice 10. Oh, just snuck by it. It'll be a nine for Chris. Not much seems wrong with his ball. He's hitting it on the right pin, so. Gets right back into the groove. He's got the head pin this time, and he has late action. And now this could be the break he was looking for. 4-8. With Wood, and it's gone for his first spare. Off to the left again, four horsemen on the right with the four and the seven. Gives him 95 through completed boxes. Beautiful bit on the second ball. Gave that a ride for sure. The head pin went left and collected everything. Wood almost on tripped it on the way into the gutter. Bare ball in a 10 box. Despite the wood on the right threatening to take that away from him. Candlepin Bowling is proudly presented by Candlepins for Cancer. This charity supports bowlers and their family members who are fighting cancer with money to help pay for treatment and bills. Since its inception, the charity has given away over $12,000 to those in need. Electronic donations via Candlepins4Cancer.com. That's the number four. Candlepins4Cancer.com. Riva half Worcester left side. Electronic donations will soon be accepted, but for the time being, if you wish to donate, please send a check to 467 High Street, number 8, in Hampton, New Hampshire, 03842. That's the hash 8 for the unit number. We will also have that address, I believe, in the description on YouTube as well. Thank you very much. Tough time with that half Worcester, Richie. All right, here we go. Seven for Riva. 
That'll give him a 112. Opens the door for Chris Merrill here with 70 plus this ball. He got the head pin. Well, he got a six fill. It is a good fill, but everyone's still puzzled by the fact that he's continuing to hammer the head pin and still continuing to get confounded leads. Maybe there's a way with this. Two, six, nine, ten. Oh, that's a brilliant shot. Got nice shot by Merrill. Take a look at this on replay. He got the wood before the two. That's how it all collapsed. His spare fill gets the head pin. Dropping seven on that and a 93 through nine. He gets another mark. He could be right back in this. And he nearly did against the three, six, seven. Overcut it. Big pin. Oh. Almost more difficult to miss it. At a 103 string, and Chris Merrill is within nine. So Evan Riva wins the first string by nine pins going into the second. We'll be right back with more of the remaining two strings here on Candlepin Bowling, presented by Candlepins for Cancer. It's the middle string, which means the higher seed rolls off. This is Chris Merrill. Starts off on the two pin. One, three, five, eight, nine. Slices the head pin just a little bit thin, but now has a piece of wood in front and a tenable leave. Drives it straight back on the red line, and there it is to begin. Chris Merrill, a lot of recent success, including the Maine State Candlepin Bowling Association title. He and Shannon Scribner. Both champions. He got a sidewall carom on this one, and he's blown out the middle two rows, leaving, guess what, the high-low. Nope, high-low, 179 and 10, not quite. Corners are full for the third ball. Very fast pace of play, I would say. For two for Merrill. Yeah, neither bowler uh, waiting uh, to get up and go. Pace of play in the game has always been a, an issue as we've grown over the years, it seems. There's Rilla. What used to be a three hour league, or a two and a half hour league, is now three and a half. Now, I do believe there is still an ICBA rule that. Leagues have to finish by us uh, in that certain amount of time. Was it three hours, if I recall correctly? Well, if there is, then it's not, not adhered to in any <laughs> league that I've ever been a part of. <laughs> and a nice 10 for Riva, brushing the head pit to the side. But on the other hand, it gives the bowlers the chance to enjoy themselves and. Uh, Always great to be in a bowling league in the relaxed atmosphere of it overall. Well, depending on which league you're in. Friday Night Pro League, certainly another story. Rivers crushed the head pit here. 3 5 10. Oh, this wood, piece of wood flattened against the deck. How do you rate his chances here, Richie? He's going to have to go buy that wood. I don't think it's any good, Greg. He nice gets shot. it. He dodges the wood perfectly. You'll want to see this one again on replay. To the right side of the pin, collecting a lot. Merrill. Now, is this piece of wood going to take the five? Yes, it is. Merrill starting to get the breaks. His accuracy has always been there. Got the first string. And it continues here, sparing the third. Is it right on that 16th board and right in the face? Spare Phil gets out the right side, and that's four.
Returns on the head pin, eight down, two to get. And Chris Merrill gets a 10. When can you miss it? It's now Evan Riva, second box. Spare Phil coming up. Box three. Half Worcester on the bill. Can't seem to get off that two pin. Side of that as ball is working really well. And another good comeback second ball. Solid secondary ball for sure. Right, seven. So lucky seven for Evan. Still does have the lead. Pin well in the first string. That could matter down the stretch. There you go. There you go. Pin. Yeah, trip the two forward. It could have been the spread eagle, but how about this wood? Yeah, how about this wood? Um, low is no good. I think you got to go super high on it. Super difficult shot here. Got low on the wood. Rebound. 3 6 dropped it, not the 10. The Bullers finished 1 and 2 in the recent Easter Classic here at Lido Lanes. They know how critical all these pins can be. It's a big 10 for Evan. Puts up at 39 through 4. Chris Merrill now on lane 33 after Al Johnson disposes of a uh, ball, I believe it was, in the channel. His fifth box, and he does get a spread. Work it, work it. One side, then the other. One side, then the other. Got the three pin. Did get that sidewall, Karam. Unlucky. Seven box brings him up to a 50 half. This time he's got all of the head pin. The wood tap, the five, doesn't drop. These are brand new pins here at Lita Lanes, which roll nicely as Merrill converts it for a spare in the sixth. Nicely done for Chris. But they're tough to get off the spot because the caps are brand new, so but once you get them, a lot more possibilities as they roll on the plate. Evan now opposite the seven box. And Riva gets one, three, six, seven, eight. Out to the right. Huge pins here. And difficult ones, three solitary islands. And one would have thought that sidewall cam would have gotten a second. Still in eight box, 47. At the half. Big box here, opposite the spare. Now, three, four, six will be a difficult puzzle to solve here. To your point, Richie, if this is an open box, Merrill could tie the match. No, oh, what a he shot. does make it. A sweet sidewall bounce. Three in the face, six off the wall, four out to lunch. What a great way to break to our break. So with a bonus ball still to be rolled for each bowler, it's Chris Merrill 60 and Evan Riva 57. We'll be right back. Now on lane 33, Chris Merrill. Chris, fire back up. Come on, man. Get over. And 
this two pin. Wow, the two pin's really gonna stand. It looked like a piece of wood poked it. Nicely done from Chris coming off the break. Two marks in a row. A six fill on the spare to bring him up to 85. Three and one. Nice shot. Utilizes the piece of wood, throws the three, four, six, ten, right back in to the pit. Sorry about that, Richie. Yeah, that's three marks in a row. Twenty-five dollars in bonus. Money. That's the first time today, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, many more. Spare fill. Is eight. The seven ten with two pieces of wood on the ten. Maybe just, just splash it and see what happens. Oh, threw the ball at the seven. And a ten box to bring him up to 75. And as you were saying earlier, Greg, these pins are huge at this point. It's such a close match. Just a one pin margin, but Rita is opposite a spare. You know, that's probably the best ball he's thrown the entire match. And he leaves parallel pins on the left. The four, five, seven, eight. Two full on the four. Now, the thing about that type of leave is you can't leave it unless you throw an absolute missile ball like that. And what a, what a nice nine. It's a working man's nine. Leaves him with 84 through eight. Barrel ahead by two plus this. Seven dropped. Got on the right side of the wood. Excellent pinning as well. 112 for Merrill. Four spares and three tens this string for Merrill. Another good head pin hit, another split. Yep, he seemed to have found the head pin, Greg. Oh, nearly cut it over. Tend to bring up a one, a 122 string for Chris Merrill. 225 total. Solid bowling. Tens could be all important here coming home. Evan now. Two pin once more. Favorite of your colleague, Dave Chester goes. One, three, four, six, seven, nine. Oh. Pretty when it goes. Even that looks pretty. Boy, and I think it would have went if that piece of wood wasn't there. It looked really nice off the hand. Ten again. Chester Cove. Oh, if you're listening to this, DC, at some point, you are a crazy person for having that be your favorite shot. <laughs> I do like the sense of aesthetic. Sorry to be contrary. Oh, it is. Oh, it's. A, oh, it's so nice when it goes, especially outside. It's oh, a thing of beauty. It goes like nothing. Right this tenth box, and he's got Wolf Horseman and Eight, aka the Kaliri. Oh, what a shot! Nice and clean. Four horsemen. Head pin off the wall, trips the eight, a thing of beauty. That 
extra pin and it increases the difficulty of the shot. I have made it look easy. Timely shot as well. Let's see what he fills it with here. Nicely done. Oh, it's perfect. Turns 10 into 20, gives him a 114 string. And we've got ourselves a one pin match. Chris Merrill takes the string by eight pins. It's a one pin match. See it for the third and final string in just a moment. We are here for the third and final string, a candle pin bowling presented by Candle Pins for Cancer here on Alley Chat on YouTube. Evan Riva, the number five seed to start it off on lane 33, ahead by just one pin in the match. And they say every pin counts. Case in point right here. First ball, does he have the four horsemen? Not quite. Well, getting better all the time. The three horsemen now, the one, three, and six. Got on the outside, hit the wood into the one. It almost looked like he hit the head pin forward there. Kind of strange. Good 10, though. And again, those pins may very well be important. Riva has a two in one split. Two in one, but it's the, th the two, four, and 10. There's a piece of wood behind the four and the 10. Both could be helpful here. Oh, Nearly yeah. cut it over. Piece of wood now in front of the 10, just. And well pinned again. Every pin. Three. Two consecutive tens to begin. this point in the match with a one pin match you can treat tens like marks the check mark right side for Chris Merrill lots of X's everywhere I look on the score sheet although is nine fine it is with the match this close we'll see drop on the head pin, spread eagle plus the eight. Oh, good hit. Come on. Beautiful bid by Merrill. And a 10. A huge 10 by Merrill. Keeps the match within two pins. And this string is brought to you without commercials by Alley Chat. Please subscribe to the channel. Besides these great episodes of Candle Pin Bowling presented by Candle Pins for Cancer, you can also watch vintage matches all the way back to the 70s. Subscribe to our Facebook page or live Friday Night Pro League matches and much more. Thank you. Five on 33 crushes the pocket. The best ball he's thrown on 33 so far and he leaves a stone cold kingpin. And the crowd takes notice. Richie, I started to say the word. I was so convinced. I, you know, I was I was right behind you, Greg. I don't know how you could fit through that hole. And he's going to do it again. <laughs> I thought he was going to do it again. <laughs> ten, but ten, again, ten. huge, huge pin. Two pins, the margin in the match. He's really been on the head pin on 34. Be a time to be there again. Throws the two fingers out halfway to, to Worcester. Nice 
nice backup ball there. That's a tough one when you when you know that you're throwing a half worcester and you throw the two fingers out. That's a really tough tough scene for a bowler. They're not right every time, but not right every time. But but boy, that's a, a tough one and a half seconds or whatever. <laughs> whatever it is. Eight, eight bucks brings up thirty eight. You can see you can see it going down. You know what's about to happen. Right. Leaves the door open for Chris Merrill here. And that's a beautiful ball on the 1-3. And he's got the four pin. Watch this wood rolling to the left. Let's see where it settles. And I think it's going to settle just about where Alfie needs to go, go chase it. He certainly needs to go take a look at this. Frank, cue up the music, please. It is Deadwood forward of the Deadwood line and must be removed. Merrill converts the clean four pin and he has a spare. Timely mark for Chris. Already with $25 of bonus money for the three consecutive marks. $25 also for winning the second string. Well, this is a really strange one. He was off to the 3-6 and somehow leaves the 8 and the 9. And with the piece of wood now going to take out the other pieces, I think it's a wired shot. All he has to do is hit the red line here. What a huge break. 8 fill on the spare as well. Gets the red line and does spare. Back to back. Not a break until you make it. Nicely done by Chris Merrill. Very rare to see a break like that. And timely as well here in the match. Can Riva respond? He has the head pin. Beautiful ball. He's got his chance. Moved the four pin off the spot. Eventually it fell. An iota to the right. Nine it is, and it's a 47 half. Oh, how quickly the match can change. He really needs a mark now. It's still true about the pinning. It does set the foundation, but now he does need to respond to these back-to-back -back marks, exactly as you mentioned. Lays the ball nicely in the one, two. Leaves the triangle on the right-hand side. On the deep side, the six, nine, and 10. Not quite must make territory, but it wouldn't hurt. Scooted by. Checks another pin, staying the course, 56 for six. But now Chris Merrill a chance to fill. Looking for blood here on the fill. Got, got six. Diamond on the right hand side. Always tougher than it looks on that leaf. You yeah, you're right about that, Greg. Even if you hit it right sometimes, it doesn't carry. However, he'll take the 10 box on top of the six fill. Through completed boxes, I have him up 15. A spread eagle to work on here to try and protect that lead. Second ball's a good one. Boy, this match really is gonna come down to pinning. Gets the eight. So 71 for Chris Merrill through the game and through the match, we have a 15, uh, excuse me, a 14 pin lead. 
for Chris. Now both bowlers open, four frames to go. Merrill ahead by about those two spares he put up, in fact. So one would think Ryba would need a pair of his own to respond. Yep, two with good fills. Got to start with one. Wow. One eight nine. W, I suppose that is, if you look at it overhead. I, I view the five pin as a piece of wood in this situation. It's better than the spread eagle. You use the five pin, you just pick a, pick a check mark and use the five pin to try to throw either the two or the three over, whichever you select. One ball left against the spread eagle. Get a roll. Let's get out. A good third ball to bring him up to 63. Potentially a big third ball. It's going to keep it under 20 unless Chris marks, but he really needs a mark right here. Evan does. Two, four, six isn't the lead you want in this situation. Yeah, the 10 pin looked like it was going to trip into the six, but unfortunately just turns into a piece of wood now. Going to have to cut it. Oh, nearly does. Sure, on one hand you missed the two, but a little bit to the right. Could have made the difference. Nine box for 72. Opportunity for Merrill if he can... Get some more marks here, Richie. Yeah, another mark here would really be trouble for Evan. On the head pin again. Three and one, but not the worst, not the worst leap in the world. The motion seemed to get stopped up as he hit the three and the six. And in spite of the sidewall carom, he gets a nine box and gets an 80 for seven. Yep, that picks him up another two pins through the completed boxes. There you go. Now there's that double wood situation again. Wood in between. Oh, tough break. Ball went one way and pin went the other. Merrill checks his 10 and he has 90 for eight. Well, that leaves the door open here for Evan. He's gonna require two marks regardless of the situation. But that little backwards half Worcester for Merrill there could have easily gone. Trailing by 17 in the match. Two spares and good count, fair to say? Great count. Got to start with one here. A He's beautiful ball. Come on, the ball. Oh, and the and wood trips he? into the gutter. And now he has. He has to wow. use that wood, doesn't wow. he? I, th I think so. I, I mean, you, you could play the 10 pin off the, the wall and hope maybe it clips one of those pieces of wood as well, because there's two pieces on the right hand side in the gutter. Or you go right hand tip and hope that it comes off the wall. I think it's slightly angled. You'd have to go almost on the cap on the right-hand side if you're going to do it. I have a taking his time. I remember him taking a lot of time before his 20th string of the Eastern Classic. Oh, he, he has to make this. He knows how important the shot is. Plays the 10 pin a, a, a really good bit. He actually got to the left-hand side of that 10 pin. A gutsy, a gutsy shot. But a nine box. And now he's going to require a double. Triple, really. Triple strike would be worth 500 bucks. That would be nice. Start with one. Wow, look at this leave. Woof. Four, nine, ten. Both bowlers have been so accurate on the head pin. 
but the pins don't always give you what you want. I'm trying to remember the last time I saw the 4-9-10. <laughs> what a brutal <laughs> leaf. We'll let, the, we'll let Bullmore take care of that well, Yeah, that's a good idea. Seven bucks. You and hit the button, it takes them all. 88 string, and that is a 314, if I could do my math. Merrill crushed a head pin, and he has a strike in the ninth box. First of the match. Oh, a double. A quick one, too. Waste no time. I don't want him to hear this, Richie, but no one's done three in a row just yet. Well, not just yet, but... In all the matches we've had here on... Just, just wait about three seconds. Or less at the speed he bowls. Uh, I said three seconds, not three pins. <laughs> A good second Nicely ball. done. Some great bowling from Chris Merrill. 131, and Chris Merrill is your winner of the first stepladder match. Final score, 356 to 314. We'll talk to the bowlers in just a moment. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Right. This is the first match, Candle Pins for Cancer. And Richie, what a great match it was. Difficult uh, to get the pins, but they did a great job of that. Some great shot making. And in the end, Chris Merrill prevails over Evan Riva. Throws a double strike on the end to bring it home. And let's bring up uh, both of our bowlers here. Let's give a hand to our bowlers here. Chris Merrill and Evan Riva. Two fine main bowlers, even though I can't say you're from Maine anymore, right? Anymore. I can't, no. Not anymore. Yeah. No. It was a great match today, Evan. We appreciate you uh, coming out and supporting Candle Pins for Cancer. Uh, it really did come down to that last couple of boxes uh, against uh, somebody that uh, you know pretty well in Chris Merrill. I do. Yeah, he's easily the best bowler in Candlepin right now. So he deserves to go on, and hopefully he runs the whole ladder. I see Purdy over there. He's anxious, so we'll see what happens. But <laughs> You say anxious. I see he's laughing over there, so we're looking forward to that next one. So uh, uh, take it away, Greg. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. What a great match that was. Uh, tough to get strikes. It seemed as though there were a lot of head pin hits that just weren't splitting the pins nicely until the very end. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things that happens in candle pin bowling. It's a game of candle pin. You just got to keep fighting and keep going at it. And was the, there were two strikes in a row. Was the pressure on in that third one, or you have a cool, calm, collected mindset about it? I was good. I just yanked it, you know, guarded it right in the corner. <laughs> well, none... Nonetheless, great bowling. Congratulations. And we will see you for the next match against Dom Drake. But, That'll not, but not before I give Evan Riva $225. I, I'd be remiss. As a consolation prize, $200 for coming in fifth place and $25 for winning the first string. So, Evan, thank you so much for coming down here and, and uh, supporting Candle Pins for Cancer. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Not a problem, Richie. Saying. We'll and, be back next week, right? And that's right. And, Chris, I got nothing for you because we will see you next week against the number three seed, Dom Drake. Until next time, my name is Greg Guyar, and alongside Richie Myrick and for the entire Alley Chat team, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.